you need to find deer before you can shoot them. And in this video, you'll get seven tips to help you find deer when hunting. Actually, you'll get more than tips. You'll get a microstructure to help you simplify and apply all the skills and knowledge you need to find deer when hunting. The first check sounds a little new age, but it's used by experienced trackers all over the world. Welcome to the Red Kettle channel. This is where you get tips to help you waste less time and waste less money when hunting. This video will get seven tips to help you find deer and other animals when hunting. Then I'll break some of the steps down into smaller units to help you action everything. What a warning, you mustn't skip any steps. They're designed to work in tandem. Enough said, let's get started. Point number one, tune in. Tuning in sounds new age, but it's a simple but essential step. It means pausing to take in your surroundings and get a feel for the baseline activity before you set off. It includes making a mental note of what to look for. You're looking for dots in the distance or details and movement up close. It's also a critical step if you have a busy monkey brain like me, one that needs a moment to settle down when you hit the woods and the hills. Tip number two, scan, stop and stare. This is a systematic way to look for animals. It ensures you cover all ground and gives your eyes the maximum opportunity to see animals. This is important because we tend to let our eyes dwell on specific focal points, like openings in vegetation or individual bushes and trees in an open field. This bias means we'll often neglect other and more critical areas. When done right, this tip also helps you to spot movement. You can scan, stop and stare based on the following six steps. Step number one, scan and pause. It's a methodical way to ensure you cover all ground. Make sure you scan in a grid system to control your eyes, left to right, near to far. Step number two, move your head, not your eyes. It's a trick to help you maintain fresh eyes and stay focused. Step number three, see, don't look. This is a check to ensure you look actively and don't just point your eyes. Step number four, stare when your eyes connect. It means focusing intensely when something undefined catches your attention. Staring when hunting is okay, even if your mom told you not to. Step number five, move as fast or slow as you can scan. This is a reminder to adjust your pace to how much terrain you need to cover. Consider these four scenarios to help you apply the steps and procedures for scan, step and stare. Scenario one, when hunting on foot in woodland, you've got to slow down your pace to absorb the additional details. Scenario number two, when hunting on foot in open terrain, you must move from point to point to survey the ground. Scenario number three, when hunting from a tree stand, you should focus on potential hotspots after an initial scan. Scenario number four, when glassing from a vantage point, you have to be disciplined to avoid your eyes getting lost. And remember to cycle between eyes and optics to stay focused. Before moving to tip number three, I wanna remind you that these tips are designed as a system. Don't skip any of them. Don't skip the detailed steps. You need to apply all of them to get full effect. Tip number three, look in the right places at the right times. To find the animal, it pays to know where to look and when to look. Ultimately, it'll help you avoid wasting time and wasting money when hunting. You can consider the following dimensions to help you ensure you know where and when to look. The animal's preferred habitat. When building a picture of the preferred habitat, describe these three factors. The terrain, vegetation, and waterways and bodies of water. And consider how they're relevant to the animal's need for food and water, and the animal's need for protection from predators and from the elements. The animal's physiological needs. You can describe the animal's physiological needs with four factors. Feeding and drinking, resting and ruminating, reproduction and mating, safety and protection from the elements. For example, most ruminants go through two to four hour feeding cycles. In woodland, it's easier to time your hunt to the hours they feed because they'll often bed in cover to ruminate. So times of activity is usually around dusk and dawn. Finally, consider the animal's activity and behavioral patterns to determine when and where to find or intercept it. Consider the following factors. The annual cycle means building a picture of macro movements or migratory patterns. For example, movement from high ground to low ground. The 24 hour cycle covers patterns for feeding, resting and ruminating. Hotspot movement patterns mean building a picture of movements between water holes or salt lakes. Reaction to weather includes wind, rain, snow, etc. For example, animals are more active on nights with more moonlight. On those days, they're then less active around dawn, so it might be worth staying in bed. And reaction to threats and disturbance means learning what an animal does when you bump into it and how animals will change behavior due to periodic disturbances in an area. I mentioned you shouldn't skip any steps. The flip side of that advice is that you should expand all the knowledge I share here. More on that later. Tip number four, Look, smell, and listen for animal indicators. 
Animal indicators include signs, smells and sounds. They include everything from well-worn trails to a single pin hair in a used deer couch. When you find them and age them, you'll start to build a picture of activity in that particular area. It's helpful to group signs. And here are six categories you gotta know. Signs of movement, which includes tracks and trails. Signs of restings, which are animal beds or deer beds, deer couches. Signs of feeding, which includes both signs of eating, obtaining minerals and the droppings that deer and other animals will leave. Signs of other types of behavior include bucks or stacks fraying to rub the antlers clean of velvet. And it includes wallowing and mud bathing. Animal sounds include mating and rotting sounds and alarm calls. The smell of animals doesn't mean you have to turn into a hound. It's another factor to help you assess if animals are nearby or active in an area. Okay, we've got three tips left before you know what to do to master the art of finding deer. So stay tuned. Tip number five, look for suggestions of animals. Looking for animals rarely means a picture perfect silhouette in the middle of a meadow or clearing. More often it means spotting the flick of an ear or shadow taking a step forward or a bunch of dot moving on a hillside in the distance. To spot the animal, it's helpful to consider these six S's. Shape, which is not just the full deer silhouette. It's a reminder to look for details like the flick of an ear. Shadow means the actual shadow plus looking in the shadows. Silhouette really means contrast and you've got to be aware of cases where contrast works in your favor and the cases where it means you've got to pay extra attention when looking for animals. Surface and shine are reminders to look for the subtle differences between vegetation and fur. Sighting and spacing means understanding when and how deer animals look out of place, like a string of dots on a hillside. Speed is a reminder to look for movement. Movement doesn't start with an S, so I pick this word instead. The bottom line is that movement is a critical giveaway, which is also why you must pause when you scan. Two tips left, getting closer to deer spotting Nirvana. Tip number six, confirm it's the right animal. When you found a deer or animal, don't shoot if it's out of season, not on your tag or not on your call plan. Consider these factors when determining if a deer or other animal ticks the right boxes. Antler or horn size or shape, male versus female, and young versus mature. Now the most important tip, practice and apply the knowledge for successful hunting. You need to learn these tips before you can apply them and you need to use them before they make a difference. And here's a link to a course that'll help you do that. You'll get the extra level of detail I mentioned earlier, examples of all the points we've covered, plus a workbook you can use as a quick reference guide in the field. Use it to help you avoid wasting time and wasting money when hunting. Use it to set yourself up for success in the field. Click now to check it out.